Hey guys, Kibby Vapes back here with another review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Vaporesso Polar Mod. So let's take a vape, go down below, and see what comes in the kit. Okay, and here it is, the Vaporesso Polar with Cascade Baby SE Tank. Here's the packaging. Very beautiful packaging. Got some information on the side here. Claims Instafire 0.001 second firing speed, a 2 inch TFT display, the Cascade Baby SE tank with a 6.5 ml capacity, isolated structure, safety lock mechanism, mesh coils, Omniboard 4.0, which delivers Instafire optimized user interface and multiple protection, and 2.5 amp quick charging flip it over to the back you have some more information here's the technical specs of the polar mod the dimensions of the polar mod are 45 by 28 by 90 millimeters the display is a 2 inch TFT display it takes two 18650 batteries not included the power range is 5 to 220 watts and the voltage range is up to 9 volts Temperature control range is 100 degrees Celsius to 315 degrees Celsius or 200 degrees Fahrenheit to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. The tank capacity not only is 6.5 ml, but they do offer a 2 ml EU addition. The product contains the Polar Mod, the Cascade Baby SE tank, one GT mesh coil, which is 0.18 ohms pre-installed and one GT8 coil which is one zero point one five ohms it also includes a replacement glass tube and one USB charging cable slide the outer case off and open it up on the left side we have our peripheral box Inside your peripherals will be your charging cable and your warranty your warranty card. As always, Vaporesso has one of the best charging cables I have ever seen. Really nice braided USB cable. Then on the right, you have the device. So here is the Polar Mod. the Cascade Baby SE with green tinted glass. Your spare coil head, which this one is the mesh. The one installed is the regular coil head. So a couple typos on the box. Now this is not the final version packaging. This is some of the very first version run so some of the packaging might be different than what you receive and if we lift this up here normally you would have your user manual however as i stated earlier this is sample packaging because this is the first run mine does not have a user manual included However, Vaporesso was very kind to reach out to me, let me know that they did not include the user manual in the first round and that if I had any questions or problems with how to use the board that I could ask them. Also note that the back of the packaging stated that there would be a spare glass tank. However, in my packaging, there was no spare glass tank. I do hope that Vaporesso includes a spare glass tank in the retail versions. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Vaporesso Cascade Baby SE tank first. All right, so here is the Vaporesso Cascade Baby SE. Very similar to the original Cascade Baby tank that I did a review on in the Vaporesso Cascade One Plus device, which if you haven't seen that review, go ahead and go check it out. Now this tank has some differences compared to the other one, and we'll go over those. First, the dimensions are 24.5 millimeters in diameter by 58 millimeters height to fill your tank you're going to it has this lock mechanism 
So you'll see here, it has a arrow right there, and that's letting you know that's where you're gonna push. But before you push, you have to pull. So you'll lift up on the top cap and push back, and that will expose your fill port there. And the reason for that mechanism is so is that your tank doesn't actually accidentally open up in your pocket when you're carrying it around. So really nice, prevents any linking from the fill port. To close it, you'll just snap it back down and that cap will jump back down into place. The drip tip on it is a 510 drip tip. So all of your 510 drip tips will fit on this device. However, do note it is 510 and not 810 has a very wide bore there. So to remove the base to install or replace a coil, we'll grab it here by this black band right here and go ahead and turn the base counterclockwise. And then you'll see the coil there. This is a quad core coil head. And I have to say that normally I would install the mesh coils because I really like the Vaporesso mesh coil heads, but we're gonna go ahead and leave this one in and I'm gonna go ahead and try out this one. So before we fill the tank, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to disassemble the rest of the tank. So this very top cap portion does come off just like the Cascade Baby. You do still have this which disconnects clockwise. So if you screw this clockwise, you'll notice your little cap here comes off. And then to screw it back on, you will screw it counterclockwise. To unscrew the chimney section, so is it if you break your glass and need to replace your glass, or you just don't like the green colored glass and you want clear or another colored glass on there. To do that, you're gonna take and grab here at this side and you're going to screw this counterclockwise. And remember to hold both this whole top section here with your thumb, otherwise you'll just unscrew this. Now, something that I also showed you in the Cascade one is that this has this, what they call isolation chamber. So part of your e-liquid is gonna be below the glass. This part of the chamber also houses e-liquid and isolates the coil from the top portion with the glass. So you can see there is a little rubber gasket down there in the bottom, or top, I guess you would say, in the bottom of the chimney. And that's where this coil sits here, is up in that gasket. So there is no threading on the outer portion of your coil. It actually sits inside and meets that gasket. The e-liquid that I'll be using today is the David Gorlitz Signature Connect Collection in Tropical Paradise. So in addition to the tank holding 6.5 mLs, it also has the tri airflow with a stopper ring. So whatever you do to one hole, it will do to the other two holes. And of course, at the bottom, we have the 510 pin. And I will let say that this is not something you should use on a hybrid device. Never ever use a sub ohm tank on a mechanical mod, and especially not a hybrid mechanical mod. Always re keep sub ohm tanks for regulated devices. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Polar Mod. So here is the Polar Mod. You have this big 2.2 inch TFT disc screen and something that I was saving for on camera here is they do have screen protectors on both sides. So give that a pull off. That is one of the most satisfying feelings is to pull off the screen protectors. You have another one here on the back. First thing is, of course, the color. They have this really nice gradient black to this lime, almost neon green color there. Big reflective screen here. To place your batteries in, you'll remove the back panel. There is a nice little notch cut out here on the side that you can grab to open that door. 
And on the inside of the door, you're going to see two magnets at the top and one at the bottom and coincides with two magnets there on the mod. And I really like that Vaporesso included this really big caution. Do not use battery with broken skin or broken wrap. So here on the Vaporesso device, you have some branding. And then you have your indicators here where it's negative up positive up. So this mod is in series. You have spring loaded five spring loaded battery contacts at the top. Batteries I'll be using are VTC 5As. So on the side negative up. Anytime you have a spring loaded battery contact, always start with that end first. Push up and then pop your bottom portion in. So push up, put it in. There's my batteries. Put my battery door back on. You have some ventilation holes there at the bottom. Turning it over, the screen automatically comes on. Look at this big, bright screen. That is one beautiful, bright screen. So once you insert the batteries, of course, it's going to show a calendar and you can either choose to set your calendar or leave it, whatever. So let's talk about how you turn off, on and off the device. So it's five clicks to turn the device off. You're gonna get that screen, then it'll power off. Five clicks, turn device on. three clicks to lock the device. One, two, three. And you'll see a little lock up there. And when you try to fire it, if there's an atomizer, it'll tell you it's locked. Three clicks to unlock. And then the padlock will disappear. To go into the menu, you have your own separate menu button right here above your micro USB charging port. So you press that and it'll let you know you need to hold that mode button for three seconds. Then it'll take you into your mode menu where you have your variables. Oh, let's see, let's go all the way through this. All right, so you have your exit, variable wattage high where it gives a burst above whatever your set wattage is, your variable wattage normal, variable wattage soft, CCW, which is your custom curvature for your wattage mode, SP, which changes your menu. So now we have this crazy looking skull guy there. Hold that again to go in and we can change it to variable voltage with that one. So go back to the odometer type reading looking. Then you have CCV, which is your custom voltage. Then we go to your temp controls, which are stainless steel, nickel, titanium. Then you have custom mode one, custom mode two, bypass mode, and set. If you go click the mode button to go into set, this is where you can set your time, your brightness, your puff counter, your theme color. You can change from orange, green, blue, yellow, red, exit. Then smart on or off. Auto on off, screen time out, version default. So let's go to screen time out. I have it set to 60 minutes right now because I was showing you guys the screen. Let's go ahead and set that down. The lowest you can set your screen time out is going to be, wow five seconds. That's cool. I really like that you can go all the way down to five seconds for your screen timeout. I am all about battery comfort conservation. So you can make your screen timeout up to 60 minutes and as low as five seconds. Press OK to confirm it. Click exit and you go back to your main screen menu. On your main screen here on the left you're going to have your resistance, which right now displays 999. Oh, screen timed out. Let's hit the fire button. And then you have below that, that is going to be the voltage. 
and then over here on this side you're going to have your wattage and then the seconds which is basically your puff your puff timer so let's go ahead and put the atomizer on top so right now the mod is in variable voltage mode so i am firing this at 0 0.5 volts which down here the w stands for watts shows 2.1 watts so let's get out of variable voltage and let's go up to variable wattage normal there we go now we're in variable wattage so 23 watts 0.16 resistance 2 on the puff counter volts 1.93 and 0.32 seconds was how long I held that last button and there's my battery life indicators two separate battery life indicators so that is the Polar by Vaporesso. Let's go up top, have a vape on her, and I'll give you my thoughts and opinions. All right, so that was an up and close look at the Polar Mod Kit by Vaporesso. So what are my thoughts? Well, let's start with the tank. The tank that's included in the Polar Mod Kit is the Cascade SE tank. And I got to say, I'm really liking this tank. I like the tri airflow that they put on it. And I also love that they color match the glass with the mod that you get in the kit. So let's go over some of the cons about the tank first. One thing that I said about the previous Cascade Baby tank and I'm going to say about the Cascade SE tank is the reverse threading on the top and the bottom. I find that if you aren't aware of the reverse threading or you're in a hurry, it's very easy to disconnect the tank from the atomizer when you try to unscrew the base. So it's very important that when you're unscrewing a device like this, which has multiple connection points that are both reverse threaded and regular threaded, that you make sure to grab the area closest to the area that you are trying to unthread. So that to me is a con because it is so easy to accidentally disassemble this tank. The next con is I'm going to have here is that the 510 that it is a 510 connection and no 810 compatibility i know for some people that's not going to be a big deal but for me i have a lot of 810 drip tips that i've had made custom to the shape and size that i like for the bore diameter and the fact that i'm limited to 510 drip tips only means that i may not have a drip tip that's my shape and style that I like. Now there is nothing wrong with the stock board drip tip that comes on here. I do find it to be quite comfortable. However, I feel that it is a bit tall. So what I'm going to have to do is find a 510 drip tip that has a lower profile, but has that same diameter to match the little lip of the catch cup at the top. Since the catch cup does have that raised lip, I'm going to want to try to find a 510 that easily matches that and that's going to be difficult so that gets a con for me now on to the pros of course is going to be vaporesso's unique locking cap feature that they have on their tank where when you pull in order to open the top cap you're going to have to pull up and then you can swivel it out and that exposes your fill port. Now keep in mind that fill port is decent size, but when trying to use a glass dripper bottle, it's not so friendly. I find that I get a lot of e-liquid pooling up around the gasket that comes off of the glass dripper. So you're gonna wanna use like nipple plastic style gorilla bottles or something like that to fill this. Otherwise you may have a bit of a mess. My next pro is going to be of course that colored glass. The fact that they match the colored glass to all the different colors and it comes in so many different colors means that aesthetically I feel like it makes it really pop and pulls together the whole atomizer mod combo so really great choice to do in this kit the next pro is going to be that it holds 6.5 ml of e-liquid that's a lot of e-liquid and is going to last you all day long if you're vaping moderately now the 
next pro is going to be, of course, those Vaporesso mesh coils. Now, I did say in my down below that I was trying out the four core first, and I did. And I got to say, the four core is good. There's nothing terribly wrong with it or anything like that. But when I popped in my mesh coil, I just find that the flavor is even better with those mesh coils and, of course, the longevity of the mesh coil. So big pro for that, that they include both a mesh and a four core. So you have the opportunity to try them both out and decide for yourself. Now let's go on to the Polar Mod. So the Polar Mod will fit up to 26 millimeters with no overhang. And I gotta say, it looks really nice with all of my 24 and 25 millimeter RDAs and RTAs. But of course, anything bigger than a 26 millimeter will have overhang. So the pros, of course, is going to be the centered 510, meaning that, you know, you're going to get as much space as you possibly can as far as the limitations by the width and the height and the depth of the device. And of course, another one that uh, is a big pro is that it has a intuitive menu system. The menu system on this is really easy. Having that separate menu button makes it very easy for the user to quickly access their menu and then use the left and right toggles to toggle through and select their options. So very intuitive menu system, very easy to read, really bright screen, colorful, which I like. I think the screen layout on this device is really nice. Next is going to be the smart mode option, which will automatically read the resistance of the atomizer that you put on top of it. And then it will give you a wattage based on what they feel is best for that resistance. So if you're somebody that switches out tanks a lot, it's really nice because if you go from maybe a higher resistance tank, which you, you're you vaping at 13 watts and you previously had a low resistance tank on there that you was vaping at 50 watts, uh, there's no risk of burning that higher resistance coil when you're swipping sw switching them out because it's automatically going to lower that resistance to what's best for that coil. Uh, next pro is going to be these, these what they call the super player mode. The super player mode is for advanced users who like to build down to 0 0.03 ohms. So if you're in super player mode, which is that skull icon on the menu system, you can build really low and still fire the device. Now let's go back into one of the cons that I have for it is going to be that it only fits 26 millimeter devices. I definitely think with the look of this device, they could have built it out a little th thicker and allowed for people to fit up to 28 and maybe even 30 millimeter devices, and it would have been just as comfortable. With this big, tall, giant tank on here, I feel like the tank is a little too big for the mod, and it feels quite top heavy when I I sit it down because of how thin this device is. So I would have liked to seen it beefed out a little bit and been a little bit thicker of a mod. And of course, the pro to that would have also been that you could use larger atomizers on it. And that's really all the cons I have for the Polar Mod. The Polar Mod, I'm really enjoying. I'm a tech person. I love being able to go into advanced modes and really tweak and set. So all of those variables that they have offered in the menu system, your custom curves in both not only wattage but custom voltage who sees that and also custom temperature control so the fact that I have all of that right there at my fingertips that I can customize means that I'm going to get a vape that is truly tailored to what I like so great mod great job Vaporesso that's my thoughts on the Vaporesso Polar Mod Kit I'll include links down below in the description where you can find the Polar Mod it's going anywhere from what I've seen anywhere from like 60 to 80 dollars online and it's all pre-order I believe still but I'll include links of places that I've found it for you in the description if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you're not already hit that subscribe button and if you are subscribed don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get notified the next time I upload a video thanks for watching you guys as always bye bye